So in this video, we're going to talk about three additional ways of getting user input. The first one, the radio button, is actually just another type of input tag that we've seen. It's similar to a checkbox. The next one, the select tag, is how we get drop-down menus. And finally, we're going to talk about the text area, which is how we can create text inputs that are multiple lines long. So I'm going to start, um, of course, with our standard HTML boilerplate. Go ahead and add in title. Save that. And let's go ahead and add a radio button. So it's just input type equals radio. And I'm going to duplicate it. Um, and I'm going to give the other one type equals checkbox, just so you can see them side by side. So this is a radio button right here. I cannot turn it off once I've selected it. This is a checkbox, which I can toggle on and off. So the difference really is that a checkbox um, allows a user to select it or unselect it to have, let's say there's five different choices of uh, things that a user can check. Let's say we're asking users to select their, um, this is a job site and we want them to select their skills. We want them to be able to say, JavaScript and CSS and HTML, or maybe only JavaScript, and they're just a bunch of checkboxes that they check on and off. A radio button, however, is used usually uh, when a user has one choice. So an example uh, typically on websites would be something like gender, where it asks you uh, to check male or female or other, um, and you only have one choice. You cannot you know, not select. You have to pick one of the elements. So to do that, Let's say, for our example, we're going to have a form where users pick if they prefer cats or dogs. And there's no option to pick both. Unfortunately, in this world, it is black or white. You either prefer cats or you prefer dogs. So to do that, um, we're going to have two radio buttons. And if that's all we do to start, I can pick one and I can also pick the other not quite what we want. I want to uh, only be able to pick one. So the first thing I want to do is get a form going, and I'm going to move my inputs into that form. And for now, we're just going to leave it so that uh, it's just a get request, and it's just the default action, which is just to refresh the page. The next thing that we're going to do is add a few labels. So I'm going to go ahead and use the for syntax. So this will be for dogs. And then we have to give our input an ID dogs. Remember, those have to match. Then same thing here, another label tag for cats. And then ID cats. So if we refresh, now we have our two choices. But I can still pick both. So what we need to do is tell HTML these two radio buttons are for the same choice. So you can pick one or the other, but they are one decision. So to do that, we need to use the name attribute, which remember, the name is uh, giving an individual input a name that HTML can refer to it by. And it's also the way that it is stored or sent in the HTTP request. That name is important. So let's give it a name here. The first one name will be, um, let's go with, let's just call it um, pet choice. And then on input here, we're also going to give it the exact same name. And the reason we do that, um, you'll see in just a second, is that by giving them the same name, it then connects them so that we now can only pick one. So if we refresh, I can click dogs or cats, but not both. And one more thing I'll show you. Let's add a button to the end of the form. And what we've seen so far is actually input type equals submit at the bottom of a form. But I'm showing you a button um, just to show to you that if the button is the last thing in a form, it will actually submit the form. So there's a few options of inputs to actually submit the form at the end, a button at the end, or input type equals submit. So now let's pick dogs. Of course, the only natural choice there. Um, remember, the name is pet choice. So we should see something up here in the query string, just like with any other inputs. When I click go, we see pet choice is equal to, and then on or on, which is not really what we expected. So we're missing one thing. 
which is we need to also say what the value of this decision is. So I'm going to go ahead and add the value tag, or sorry, that value attribute. And let's just say this value will just be dog. And this one will be cats. And let's make it all caps just so that you can see what's coming from where. Okay, so what this says, if the user clicks on dogs, under the name pet choice, store the value dogs in all caps. If the user uh, submits and clicks cats, under the value or the name pet choice, store the value cats in all caps. So just to show that to you, let's click on dogs, go, and we get pet choice equals dogs. If we do cats, we get pet choice equals cats. So the next element we're going to talk about is the select tag. And what the select tag lets us do is create nice drop down menus. So the tag name is called, it's just select. Um, it's an opening and closing tag. And if I just do that, and that's it, just select, and I refresh my page, I actually already get a drop down menu. It's just totally empty. So along with the select tag, we use the option tag. So inside of there, for every possible option that we want a user to pick, we add an option tag. So let's do a drop down that lets the user pick their favorite color. And let's do a few options here. Red, orange, and yellow. So as you can see, we already get a nice drop down here with our choices. And if I hit go, let's select orange, and I hit go, you'll see we don't actually get anything up here in the URL like we do if we select dogs. Let's do yellow this time and I hit go, I still only get pet choice. And that's because we do not have a name that we've provided. So on our select, we need to give it a name. And let's just call it fav, or let's just go with color and leave it at that. And I refresh my page, let's click cats, let's click on yellow, and watch up here as I hit go, I now get pet choice is cats and color is yellow. So what you'll see is that um, depending on the option that I have selected, in this case yellow, whoops, the browser uh, takes whatever the, the text is inside of that option and it just sends that as the value um, under the name color. So we don't always want the value that is sent um, along in the request to be identical to whatever is displayed to the user in the dropdown. So an example of that um, might be something like if we wanted a user to pick a mood. So let's say, what's your current mood? And we want to have a happy face here, a mo uh, emotionless face, I guess, and a sad face. And we end up with this nice drop down here with our emoticons. But let's say that when a user selects happy, we don't want all of this to be sent. Instead, we want the word happy to be sent or the word sad to be sent. To do that, we use the value tag, sorry, the value attribute. So we'll say value equals, and let's just say happy, value equals neutral, and value equals sad. Now if I refresh, I click dogs, let's go with sad, and I click go, you can see I get pet choice is dogs and color is equal to sad. And of course that's because we kept the name as color. We would want to change that to be mood just so that um, our markup is meaningful and actually makes sense. So cats, let's do happy, I get mood is equal to happy. Okay, so that's all we need to cover uh, with selects. Um, one other thing, is the text area tag. And text area, I'll pull it up on NDN, is a nice way to create inputs that um, are more than one line. So we're, we've seen text inputs like this, input type equals text, and they are single lines. But what if we wanted to ask a user for a bio 
or uh, to copy and paste a resume or something, that is not going to work very well in this really slim, um, short input. So text area, it's actually another tag, just like select. So it's not an input with a type. It's actually a separate um, type of form control. And the way that it works, um, there's two important parts. The first is we create a text area tag. And that on its own is going to give us this text area. But what we can also do is specify exactly how big that text area is using these two attributes, rows and columns. So I'll show you that here. Let's start with 10 rows and 50 columns. And you can see that um, my text area expanded in both directions, but it definitely got wider. So let's say I now want 100 rows. And you can see it gets a lot longer. So basically, we can specify how many rows and how many columns to change the dimensions of our text area. Uh, one other thing about it is just like with these other elements, um, let's go back to a smaller one, let's do 10 by 10. Just like with these other elements, if I wanted to send this data in the request, um, let's get rid of this input, I would need to give it a name. Name is equal to, and let's just say um, paragraph. Fill out this paragraph with some text, I click go. And you can see, if I expand this, I get paragraph equals whatever text I have in here. There we go. 